2018 was a year of solid economic growth and jobs growth for Australia, but not a year for rising asset prices. A quick recap of November's highlights and some suggestions for the markets going into the new year. The positive developments in trade negotiations between the US and China have opened the door for a late Santa rally for stocks after another turbulent month for share prices. The main US indices have bounced from their late November lows, with the S&P 500 recapturing about a half of the 11.5% peak to trough fall. Beyond the promises of a compromise on trade, the other unexpected news from overseas that has improved market confidence was the comment from US Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell that the United States are just below neutral interest rate levels, whereas as recently as October, he'd said we were a long way from neutral. So while we shouldn't get too carried away with interpreting how high US interest rates are likely to rise just based on these comments, and the recent fall in the oil price was probably the reason for this change, this was enough to take the wind out of the sails of the US dollar, helping our Aussie dollar back from around 71 cents to above 73. This rise in risk appetite, combined with more positive local economic data, including the unemployment rate staying down at 5% and more jobs growth, as hoped, sounds encouraging. What's wrong with a world of more jobs and low interest rates? The two main problems, though, are despite the strong economy, the lack of wages growth, and falling property prices, depending on where in Australia you live. On the wages side, as our Reserve Bank noted in a recent speech, the lack of wages growth flat since 2013 in real terms does place doubt on how widely economic growth and prosperity is being shared. Hopefully, real wages growth will improve next year as the jobless rate continues to fall. And our forecast is for the unemployment rate to trend down to four and three quarter percent. But the fact that real wages growth is flat at a time when housing prices are falling in the largest capital cities is not ideal. The peak to trough fall for Sydney is now 9.5% and 5.8% for Melbourne, with a large drop again in November. But as the chart shows, there are still a number of places where housing prices are more stable, if not rising. This trend is likely to continue next year, and so may well be the trend away from some capitals to regional centres, which in the context of managing population growth may be a good outcome. So going into 2019, where the federal budget looks like it will be back in the black, official interest rates will remain at these record lows, and economic growth is likely to remain above most of our peers at around 3.25%, there appears to be some momentum to build on, even if the property market will keep us guessing. There are some sizeable unknowns, however, including how China will perform, Brexit and EU risks, and also the build-up to a May federal election. Plenty to contemplate over the festive season. And that's the market update from Bendigo Bank.